Stop it. Shape up. Stop it. You know, there's sometimes when that's, is that going to help? That little one could give a hoot for your knowledge and your maturity and your whatever. You know, that was when they kicked the bugger in the shit. Let them vent. But then you're the one that says, yeah, that's good, but you know, we don't have to do that. You know, these things. And then the wounds inside start to resolve. So the healing takes place in this knower space. In you, that you hold the wounded ones within. You have your unconditional friend with you all the time. Your, 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 your unconditional accepting refuge is never absent for any situation that needs to say, hold me in this situation. You are always there for every object. And every emotion, every thought is an object, and you are there for every one. And you are the changeless one in every one. So whatever turbulence in that emotion, you can hold it as the unwavering center. Practicing the viveka, the discernment, to not leap onto the object. And those moments get away from us. <laughs> There's no denying it. And that's why I say, that's the nature of the mind. And we have to work with it, learn how it works. What does it need to overcome those mechanics? And we can. It's awesome. I do want to say that in this method, I do leave many long silences. I try, I'm open. The, the leaving people room to think and, and, and process questions is important. There's no rush. And the system is one where you do want to push back with questions and engage with an open mind and a respectful mind. I love how Swami Dayananda says, we want to be compassionate towards people, not bad ideas. So we're free to say, yes, this premise, how we're saying that, actually can't hold up. This is where this doesn't work. Let's talk about it. It's never a criticism. They never feel like any question is inappropriate or the teaching is such that you should push back against your doubt until it is resolved. But push back, we will explore the term shtada, a trust in, in the methodology. You accept the method, you, it's not just um, combative, but to resolve your doubt in a, in a spirit of collaboration with the teacher. Let's unfold this together. So again, if for some reason people tried to comment online, do email me and we'll figure out how I can see those. Anything else here? Yes. It's funny when I'm watching you guys, I see your eyes, I always wonder. What do you think? Because there's some moments I'm wondering, I was wondering what you were thinking. What? Would you say um, that upon becoming aware or conscious of habits, whether physically, emotionally, that part of the means to knowledge is accepting those habits? So, part of becoming aware of habits. So we said something at the beginning that without these values present, it's hard for the knowledge to land. The knowledge of the self being not limited by mind, body, senses. That's what we're talking about when I say knowledge. Mm -hmm. If I attribute limitations of mind, body, senses to what I call me, we're saying that maybe we can say doesn't really hold up upon inquiry, right? And that's why we call it knowledge, because we inquired and it matches my direct experience. There's a quote of Swamiji's that I'll put up here about knowledge and experience, because this term is important. We'll explore this over time. It's knowledge because it does match my experience. I can't verify it with my experience, but it was not available to me. It wasn't my conclusion first, right? And it feels fantastical. But it's knowledge because it does match my experience and also because I can't refute it. If I can't refute it and it matches my experience, it becomes a fact. If I can't refute it and it matches my experience, it becomes a fact. If I was to come and tell you, I have this knowledge that will tell you that you don't have to respond to gravity and you will float. It might be desirable to me, which is another thing that is often important in a teaching. It should be relevant and useful to me. It should be pertinent to me to be knowledge, right? So, well, not floating would, could be kind of fun and pertinent. <laughs> but that doesn't match my experience, so I can't accept it. You understand? So that's what I mean. None of these statements that come out, the pot is an object and you're in, so they don't come out and you go, I'm sorry, I can't accept that. It's not my experience. 
So because it is part of your experience, because it can't be refuted, we call it knowledge. That's knowledge of the self. But you are getting at, tell me again. Does, does... A means to knowledge is A, revealing conscious habits to ourselves. And once we do, so we become aware of these things, is accepting them, accepting our reactions sometimes, accepting you know, our physical limitations and doing asana. Is that also part of the journey? <laughs> so this journey. a step of accepting them, does that get me closer to knowledge, would mean that accepting them has a quality to it that is closer to my essential, to my true nature. That accepting, uh, 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 what are we accepting? Reactions. Reactions, right? Uh, reactions, right? No reactions. If you were specific there, that accepting those um, is not just a good thing to do, but in fact, it reveals something about my nature as a premise. But why would that be true? I touched on it earlier. So the premise in verse 247 of the Bhagavad Gita, you have authority over your actions, not the results of your actions. Right? This is a fact. Gra laws of nature, gravity. That you do not have control over laws of nature is a fact. The thing is, we don't look at our internal reactions as subject to the same laws of nature beyond our control. But they are, what I was trying to do earlier, the order in ecology, in, in, in biological order, in chemical order, cause and effect, cause and effect, right? That same law and order and cause and effect is in the psychological developmental spaces, <coughs> right? So verse 247, you do not have authority over the results of your actions. You only have authority over your actions. Swamiji would clap. He said, do this, you know. You can't not make a sound if you're going to clap this hard. I can do this. You understand? And I can't do this and say I'm going to make a sound. I have authority over the action, not the result. I can't put my hand in a cup of water and say I'm not going to get wet. I use these very obvious examples. The anger emotion is the same way. It's subject to all these, again, all these laws of all the things that had to be in place for this emotion to surface today, when you look at that, how much of that is my willful doing? It was choice. Developmental order, genetic order, you know, all the values in society, education. All these factors that led to my emotional makeup. So many, right? So that's why we, we try to distinguish what is a reaction is something that I didn't choose. It came up. The action is a choice. We want to move towards action, not reaction. We want to identify reactions inside. And that when I start seeing that the mind's reaction, this emotional reaction, in fact, what you did in meditation is the exercise that links to this, and you contemplate on this in the meditation, no thought is unacceptable. I might wish I, I, I didn't, yes, I can say I, I didn't want to be angry. That doesn't mean that the anger was unacceptable. It just means I didn't enjoy it. Acceptable meaning, because it is, it is, <laughs> why, why, why am I going to tell it to go away? Am I going to tell the cold and the ice to go away? This is the kind of order I'm talking about, intrinsic, essence. It's not choosing to be cold. The series of cause and effect, flow and flotsam, psychological, developmental, whatever, that led to this emotion surfacing, it's like the ice cube choosing to be cold. It's not like I, 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 I willfully summon this stream of cause and effect that led to this button trigger being pushed that then I don't even know why three minutes later I reacted that way. Right? So the fact that we have that, why did I do that? The fact that you can say that, it's like, then why do you want to take credit for it? <laughs> you say, oh, this mind is doing it. Now, what does it need is the question. This is what I hear you asking. What happens when I start to accept these reactions? I see that they are due to cause and effect beyond my control. And there might have been a cause that led to a wound that I'm aware of or that I'm not. 
But regardless, I can see that the me that is conscious of it now is not the one who is hurt. That me is not wounded. And there's a, a stuck developmental stage inside, unresolved, unconscious content. That little one is frozen in that moment. This is how Carol Whitfield talks about it. Had a big influence on me. And then you hold that space and you let that one heal. You let that one vent. In meditation sometimes, and we'll talk about this, sometimes the whole meditation is you dialoguing with that little one. That one's crying, that one's screaming, that one's telling you they shouldn't have done this, that I wanted to do that, I wish. Whatever, you know, let it out. Because if it doesn't come into the light, where is it going to go? If there is a developmental cause and effect, that led to materializing, if you will. It's in, but this emotion materializing. Where's it, where's it going to dematerialize to? What's going to undo the cause and effect that led to its presence? Right? To resolve it, you can't undo its cause and effect. You bring it into the light as it is. And reveal it for what it is. It's an object of an S. I am here. It's change. comes and goes. It's real. The pot is not non-existent. This is the heart of mitya. It's not a denial of the emotion. It needs healing. The little one needs to be talked to. needs to be heard. That I know it's not me. I hold it. And it's acceptable. It's crying. It's acceptable. It's angry. It's, it's regretting. It's acceptable. It's, you know what I mean? It's angry. It's acceptable. And then you start going... That's a similar situation comes up, the button comes up again, and instead of swept up, it's like, ah, there you go again. You know, so, and then less mechanical. Beautiful. Good. We end with the Om Purnamida Mantra, which again, I will post these and we'll talk about them over time. Any closing words? I'll try it in one time. Usually we do it sometimes. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Mudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamiva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Om Thank you all. Let me know if you think and feedback's welcome.